my all-time favourite, shepherd's pie. What's the secret behind a really good shepherd's pie? I would think the vegetables you use and browning it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use leeks and onions and I'll start browning off the mince. You know, no colour, no flavour. I've never yeah. forgotten that, you know that? Yeah. So... Got to have colour. Got to have colour. Otherwise, it puts that grey tinge on the shepherd's pie that looks it... greasy and yeah. cheap and nasty. We don't want that, do we? And I know you don't do cheap and nasty. Let me clear your peelings, Nan. Uh, All right, thank you very much. There's no nails in there now, is there? No. <laughs> don't be cheeky. <laughs> I remember your amazing shepherd's pie in that lovely little restaurant you used to work in, in Sheep Street in yeah. Stratford Avon. So you never got food sent back? No. Mom. Sometimes they complained that there wasn't Mom. enough. Come on. No, I'm telling you. You, <laughs> you never ever got a complaint? No. How long did you work at that restaurant for? Six years. Six hello, years. Dad and yeah. Nan. Oh, hello, hello Tilly. Tilly. What are you cooking? I'm going to make, OK? A sort of modern yeah. version of Nanny's shepherd's pie. Dad, shouldn't Nanny be doing the cooking because she's the better cook? Excuse me. Right? Mum, would you, would you chop our, uh, our onion, please, Danny? Yeah. Oh, gosh, your eyes are going to water. Um, oh, no. no. Daddy, what's in this <laughs> pot? Sorry? What's in this pot? In there, we've got a delicious steamed treacle and date pudding. That's for supper, I've got tilly. a joke for you. Um, how do skeletons call their friends? How do skeletons call their friends? I'm not too sure. On the skeleton. On the skeleton. Tilly, come on. And, OK, so two cats are in a race. One is called one, two, three, and the other is called under trois. Who won? I don't well, know. It depends who's the fastest cat. One, two, three, because under trois cats sank. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, <laughs> Tell us, why don't you make Thanks, a nice Tilly. cup of tea for Nanny? Do okay. you want me to disappear? <laughs> Thank you, darling. Bye. So I give that a little fry off. OK. Mm -hmm. Nice. Poor Tilly's jokes. They get worse. Oh, she's only having a bit of fun. Worcester sauce. Worcester sauce? That's going to give that really nice spicy seasoning. Ouch. Thank you. Oh, that's hot. You OK? Yeah. Tomato puree in. You could put a ton of tomatoes in this if you wanted to. You could, yeah. Put that mince back in there once it's drained. I'm just going to put a little touch. I know you'll go crazy at this. A little touch of red wine. I wouldn't put that in. Really? <laughs> but why the red wine? Well, because I'm going to make it nice and rich. OK. <laughs> Reduce the red wine down. Yeah. And then start covering your mince with your stock. Now I'm going to bring that up to the ball. OK. And then get some yeah. fresh rosemary. OK. Like a little taste? Yes, please. Mm. Is it hot? It's a little bit hot. Be careful. Oh, I don't like the wine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> As it cooks out, the wine and the alcohol will disappear. It'll be delicious. Trust me. Oh now, God. spring onions will chop up. Yeah. And that's going to go through the mashed potatoes mashed that's going to sit on top of that nice... nice. I like that. ..savoury, yeah. delicious mince that's laced with all that red wine. Nice. So, spring onions into there, please, Mum. Thank and I'm going to drain off the potatoes. Hi, Dad. Hello. Hello. Hi, oh, hi, Jack. Oh, hi, 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 Hello. Hello, Jack. Have a nice day at school. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So we're we'll going to dry out those potatoes and then mash them. Nice. Oh, can I mash them? Uh, would you? Okay. Um, Holly, slice a little knob of butter in there for Jack, please. Yep. Yeah. So what was the restaurant you worked at then? Were you a chef? Cook. <laughs> 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 I love the diplomacy. <laughs> well, you were a chef. I was a cook. No, mm -hmm. you exactly you that. Not really. <laughs> you used to help me when you was little. Right. Like you kids do. Now, potatoes. These are nice and fluffy, aren't they? Aren't they? And do you want know mum look? Delicious mashed potatoes. Yeah. With no lumps in there. <laughs> hey, what are you getting at? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's great having you back in the kitchen, mum. You know. Yeah. Huh? Seriously. Brings back good memories. No. Just. Why'd you do that, Dad? I just, just want to fork it to get it nice and spiky. So I want that nice crispy topping. And then, lightly grate that cheddar cheese on top. And that goes in the oven, literally 20 minutes, 180. 20 minutes. Jack, yes. can you open the door, please, Mum? That looks lovely. Doesn't it? Yeah. Even though you said you didn't like it earlier. OK. <laughs> back in the day, Mum's meals all came with two veg. And this is no different but with a modern twist. 
braised peas and carrots with a fantastic homemade mint butter. Shepherd's pie, glazed on top. That looks lovely, doesn't, doesn't it? Doesn't it? And then the carrots. Oh, seeded carrots. That's why I didn't put carrots in. Let's put them on the side. I see. This is my ultimate childhood dinner. Shepherd's pie with crispy cheese champ topping, sweet buttery peas and carrots. Now we're going to make a delicious beetroot risotto. We need to get the shallots, just slice them in half, and then just chop them like that. OK? OK. Now, have you ever made a risotto? No, I haven't, actually. Shallots, please, into the pan for Daddy. Add a sprinkle of salt and pepper, along with a couple of crushed cloves of garlic. Once you start cooking the risotto, it's really important to have your stock gently boiling away. If we're adding cold stock on top of the rice all the time, it just slows down the process. Generally, you cook it a nice, wide, flat pan. Yeah. If you cook it in a deep pan, all the rice sort of cooks at different temperatures. What stock is that in there, Dad? Because that's a vegetable stock. Yeah, because okay. you can't have different stocks if it's for a vegetarian, can you? No, you can't have chicken stock. I made that mistake once, putting beef stock in a vegetarian soup. Did you? No, I they... didn't. Matilda. Are you sure? I'm positive. I'm joking. Fry off the time. How nice does that smell? It smells delicious. Rice in? That's a bit of a different rice. And this is Alborio rice. It's a perfect rice for risotto. Now, it's really important to sear the rice. If we were just to put the stock in without sweating off the rice, it goes all starchy. So keep on stirring for Daddy. Is this going to make a flambe? No flambe on the risotto. To go with our deep red beetroot theme, I'm adding red wine. Followed by the first ladle of stock to get things started. Now we're off. Wow, it's giving it a cloudy sort of look. What's happening to the stock? The stock is reducing down and the rice is sucking it in. That's right. So the rice is actually getting nice and plump. When a risotto is live, when it's like this now, we can't stop cooking it. We have to cook it all the way. OK, ready for the next ladle? I'm ready. Good girl. Here we go. Ladle in. So we have to make this for literally 20, 25 minutes and we're nursing it all the way. Beetroots. Peel them, rub them with a little bit of salt and sugar yeah. and a little bit of aged balsamic vinegar in there. Roasted them and we're great. My parmesan. How's that rice doing? The rice is doing good. Now, that is exactly where you want to be now, look. Look at that nice, glossy, textured rice. So beetroots, I want you to put two-thirds of the beetroot in there for me, saving one-third for the top. Good. Sprinkle the parmesan in there for me, please. All over. Nice. It's like it's snowing. Again. And then we're just going to get some nice butter in there. The butter gives the risotto a really nice gloss. Look at that. Beautiful. Let that come down. Let it come down first. All right, get your spoon in there now for Daddy. Beautifully. There you go. Good. Wonderful. Shake it. The risotto should be like lava. It just flows out. And then the rest of the beetroot on top. And then we finish. And then some extra virgin olive oil on top. There. I'll pick up the bruschetta. You take that to the table. OK? Let's go, Danny. Mmm. This is my ultimate vegetarian dinner. An unctuous roasted beetroot and thyme risotto.